Building a powerful personal brand leads to more opportunities, more money, and of course, you'll grow your social media and YouTube channels faster. So in this video, I talk with John from Bulldog Mindset, who's built a seven-figure personal brand from scratch, and he shares his five best tips of how you can do it as well. Coming up. Want a copy of YouTube Secrets audiobook for free? Right now, when you sign up for a free 30-day trial of Audible, you can also get a complimentary copy of the number one best-selling YouTube strategy book in the world. Download your copy today at tubesecretsaudio.com. What is up, influencers? We're back with another interview to help you build your influence, income, and impact. And I'm so pumped to have my friend, John Sanmez here, founder of Simple Programmer and Bulldog Mindset. Over 200,000 subscribers on YouTube, multiple seven-figure business over the last decade in the industry, and has built a powerful business brand and personal brand. John, how's it going? It's going great, yeah. Super pumped to have you here on Video Influencers and uh, pumped to be connecting again here in Vegas. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So for those that are just kind of getting to know you, you've been in this thing for over a decade. Mm -hmm. What's like a snapshot of um, your story and how you ended up where you are today? Yeah, sure. So I started out as a software developer and I you know, had a pretty good career. I, I did well as a developer. And what I started to find out was through creating a blog. I started off just creating a personal blog just to kind of share some stuff. And as it started to gain popularity, I started to realize that my technical skills were not as important as my marketing and social skills. And as those developed and I started to build an actual brand around this blog and I started going on podcasts and started building up a name in the industry, it affected my bottom line just as a software developer way more than increasing my technical skills, right? Everything that everyone was focusing on. And so I started actually teaching software developers soft skills, how to market themselves as a software developer was like the first course I ever created. And when I, when I started doing that, it, it gained a lot of traction and I further magnified my brand and I ended up actually building the first company, Simple Programmer, out of that. It, that little blog turned into you know a, a huge website now that was like 10 years ago and you know generating enough re enough revenue like more money than I ever made a software development job I was able to quit my job basically retire young and then uh, from there what I ended up doing was doing start getting started on YouTube as that started growing and I got really into personal development I started the new brand Bulldog Mindset and I've been working on that since that's amazing so when people think why should I build a personal brand? You mentioned some things in there. What was kind of the light bulb moment for you and some of the powerful reasons we should be focusing on this? Yeah, so you know, the big light bulb moment for me was I remember sitting at my desk in a, in a cubicle when I was first you know, the, creating the Simple Programmer blog. And I remember one day getting a phone call uh, from, from someone and they said, hey, we wanna, we wanna hire you for a job. And, and I thought, I said, well, wait a minute, you, you want to interview me for a job? And they said, no, 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 uh, all of our developers know you. We read your blog and watch your videos and stuff. We just want to hire you for the job. And that's when I had that aha moment. And wow. I was like, wow, this is like insanely powerful. Uh, you know, you, you don't just get offered a job in the software development. You got to go through this interview process and all this stuff. And so I realized that, wow, this is like, uh, this is pretty cool. Like I can actually, you know, create a personal brand that's, hugely valuable and it's going to boost my career and then it opened up all these doors all these opportunities i was getting people that were calling me saying hey would you like to write a book would you like to create video courses for us and so it just opened up a, a huge amount of doors and that's when i realized that it was all that personal brand that was the power that's so powerful and influencers we encourage you like no matter what you're doing like of course if you want to grow your youtube channel but it can lead to like career promotions open doors and in industries and so building a personal brand is really critical in the year we're living in and you have five tips and so let's dive into these the first one is actually think like a traditional brand what do you mean by that so you know i think a lot of people when they're trying to build a personal brand, they don't really think as if they're like Starbucks or Apple or mm. Google, right? If you look at, you know, Starbucks is a good example because their logo, right, it's it's consistent. You see the same logo everywhere, okay? If you walk into a Starbucks, you know exactly what the ambiance is gonna be. You know what's on the menu. It's all standard, it's, it's that experience and that feeling and they have a consistent message, right? And so that's, that's what, you know, when you're building a personal brand, you need that same thing because people need to be able to recognize it and they need to know what to expect and what they're gonna get from you and what you represent. And so, you know, companies like Starbucks, McDonald's, all these big brands, 
you know that already. But if if you know if I'm meeting you and I just know you by name, even if you're just using your name as a personal brand, I I don't know what that means, mm -hmm. right? Until I've seen it multiple places. If I see the same headshot in in multiple places, if I if I see the even the same colors, right? Just like a a real business would do, then then when I see that, I recognize that I have that feeling of, you know, I feel like you're an authority. It automatically creates that same kind of feeling. Like when we see, you know, I was just walking past, you know, in the airport, I was, I was walking past a vending machine and I saw, you know, I, so far away, but you know, I like Sour Patch Kids and I saw, I, and I could, I could barely make it up, but I, I know it immediately because I know the colors and I, you know what I yep. mean? And so it's the same type of thing. It's like people will recognize you and they'll have those, that association of the, of your message and the feeling that you give them. And that's so powerful. And it's probably one of the biggest mistakes a lot of people make, mm -hmm. especially when they're getting started on social media, is there's all kinds of different looking photography, logos, colors, and then the actual content itself. It's like random acts of content. Right. A video about this, a video about that. It's like all over the place. So you're saying really pull it in and be consistent uh, with your messaging and all these things. How have you executed that in Bulldog Mindset? We got branding all over here. We got the yep. shirt on. What has been your thought in this new brand you've built? It's beautiful. I mean, you got the good colors. Did mm -hmm. you invest in that a little bit? How did you pull those pieces together? Yeah, so this one, so Simple Programmer was by chance, right? I didn't know what I was doing. Eventually, I started to figure it out. But when I set out to build this brand, I specifically set out to build a brand where you would want to have this, the logo on your shirt, right? That you'd be yeah. like, oh, this is a cool shirt, just by itself, if you didn't know anything else about the brand. So I specifically invested, right? I, I went on 99designs, I hired, you know, did a contest on there, and I meticulously, uh, you know, evaluated and, and did polls to make sure that I had something that, that I felt really proud of, that looked really good. Mm. I got the colors, right? And I used those colors in my, in my YouTube videos, on my website, and using really the branding element. And then I focused down. I said, okay, you know, what am I about? What what do I represent? What is the bulldog mindset, right? And you know, it's it's somewhat broad. I think, you know, it's you're gonna have more success initially if you niche down, if you can be the number one best in the world at a particular thing. But uh, but the messaging is what I focused on for Bulldog Mindset. I said, okay, this is a brand that is gonna teach, uh, teach young men how to become men. It's gonna teach them how to become mentally strong, how to become stoic, right? How to get all of the areas of their life in order. And I planned that out ahead of time. You got finances, you got fitness, you got relationships, social skills, all that stuff is mm. all combined. To, to be the kind of man that you, you want to be. So I made that all clear and all part of the messaging and that all went into the idea of the logo, right? Even when you look at the bulldog on the logo, the, it's, a, it's a triangle for a reason because yep. there's three pillars. There's three things. It's, it's the, the finances, you know, the fitness and the relationships or social skills and then the bulldog himself, right? He's got, you know, it's a fierce type of thing, but he's got the tie. He's got the that tie, was, yeah, I was you know, noticing the tie. So, because we're businessmen, we're not yeah, just thugs, yeah. you know what I mean? That's, yep. that's the, the kind of idea, so. I love that. So number one, really think like a traditional brand and bring that consistency together. And then number two is pick your platforms. So mm -hmm. what do you mean by that? So you can't be on every platform, right? I think, you know, actually when I started out, I'd listened to some advice from Pat Flynn and he said, be everywhere. And I, I do agree with that, but, it's changed a little bit mm. since since that time, right? That was 10 years ago, and there weren't that many platforms, and there wasn't that much noise on the platforms. So now, you know, with all the platforms that we have, I think it's really important that you pick one platform actually to start with, maybe maybe two, and you focus and you double down on that so that you can actually get momentum and, and cut through all that noise because that signal to noise ratio is really important. So if you're trying to produce content for Twitter and Facebook and all this stuff, and eventually you can do that and it's good, the, the problem is that it's just going to be diluted too much. Mm. right? So if you pick one thing, you're very focused on that, and you can create content specific for that platform, that's when you're going to grow. People are going to recognize you. You can expand out. So you got to be really strategic in that. You can't just be like, okay, I'm going to Snapchat today. I'm going to do Instagram today. Uh, and when you, because when you do that, you just don't have enough time to be able to produce good quality content on all those platforms. That's really strong. So then for you, what is the focus for Bulldog Mindset platform wise? Yeah. So for Bulldog Mindset, the primary focus is YouTube, right? Video. And then the secondary that I've been growing up now is Instagram. I've got a blog, but I'm not really focusing on that, right? And, and I've got a podcast, but the podcast is secondary. It, it actually, I just take the audio from my video. So I'm not treating that as a primary platform. And eventually, you know, as, as I grow this, then what I'll do is I'll reach out to podcasts and get on podcasts. I mean, just like we're doing now, now I'm starting to kind of hit that phase where I want to 
expand where I've got enough of a platform on my own platform that I want to go out to other people's platforms and get some recognition there. And that that's what's going to create that really strong brand is people are going to say, oh, I saw you here. I heard you here. Right. I've seen some of your videos. And when they make those couple of connection points, all of a sudden now they're like, oh, yeah, I know. I know who that guy is. I love so. it. I love that. So Instagram, podcast, YouTube, mm -hmm. influencers. But tell us in the comments, what platforms are you focusing on right now? Let us know. And video has become a primary modality. Of course, we can do audio and text or photos, but video has been a big priority for you. Why video? We're here on Video Influencers, yeah. but I'm curious your take. Well, there's, I mean, there's a few reasons. I have done, you know, I've done other primary platforms. Blogging was my initial one. And, you know, I've done writing and uh, podcasting as a primary. But the thing with video is I feel like it's a medium where you connect with people deeper, right? And they feel like they already know you. And it creates that kind of celebrity status. There's nothing like video for creating the celebrity status. I mean, I, I kind of realized this when I was walking down the street. And then, you know, and people will recognize you. And they'll be like, oh, my God. I and they want to take pictures with you. That never happened when I had a, a popular podcast. Yeah, or, makes sense. You yeah. know, I was a best-selling author. It doesn't matter. No one knows who a best-selling author is. That's I mean, funny. you won't recognize if you see him but video it's like you could have a YouTube channel with 50,000 subscribers so not even you know a huge number of subscribers but if one of those people sees you they're like oh my god they've just met yeah. you know a, a celebrity so video is extremely powerful and then also for my brand with Bulldog Mindset I, I talk a lot about I do a lot of extreme stuff right I mean I, I run marathons and I fast and and I and I stay in shape and so it's really important for me to be accountable like if people can see me on video mm. then they know okay well John is staying fit all year round and so he's the thing that he's telling us you, you can he's, see it he's right? living I can't fake it exactly yeah that's really really powerful okay that brings us to tip number three but influencers if you're getting value smash that like button because this is some fire content tip number three is be prolific what mm -hmm. do you mean by that there's a big strategy I found in life which uh, which works under any circumstance you don't necessarily have to have the best strategy but if you are just prolific you will eventually win mm. that's what, what I found you know I, I've done this multiple times in my in my career from you know one of the best examples that that really boosted my career was I did some videos when I was doing software development for a company called Pluralsight and they actually went public just uh, just last year but when I started out there was like maybe like 15 authors on the platform and 50 courses and I, I said in my mind I said you know what I'm gonna become the most prolific author on this platform, right? Like I, I, these other guys have, have much higher clout, they have bigger brands, no one even knows who I am, but I'm gonna produce more content than anyone else. And what ended up happening was I created 50 courses, actually 50 something courses in, uh, in about three years. I, at one point I had half the content on their platform was mine. And, uh, and, and through doing that, I built up my name. And what, what ended up happening also, which was critical, was a lot of authors, you know, they made pretty good livings. You know, they would make passive income royalties from their courses and maybe make like $100,000 a year or so. Well, over the course of, of the time that I built those courses, I've made over $3 million in royalties alone Jeez. just from that. And it's because when you have 50 courses, you're gonna have one or two courses that generate a huge amount of revenue. If yeah. you just do a few things, it doesn't, it's not as effective. And so the same thing with YouTube. When I started on YouTube, I was started out doing like one video every week or so. And then, and then my channel was just like 1,000 subscribers, 2,000 subscribers. And then it just barely was creeping up there. Like, you know, eventually got up to like five or 10,000. And then what happened was I, I had to switch over. I said, you know what? I need to apply this being prolific strategy. And I started making two videos a day, every day for, I think I carried it on for about two years. And my channel just started skyrocketing after after that point. Hmm. And, you know, so it's, it's really important to be prolific because when you do that, a, a couple things happen. One, uh, you get, you cast a wider net, right? Because especially anything that's search engine related like YouTube is, yeah. you're going to, there's going to be more pieces where people can find you. And then the second thing is when you're prolific, you become better and better at your craft. It right? levels you up so fast. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's, su that's super powerful. And actually the tip makes sense, but it can also seem kind of overwhelming. So mm -hmm. if we were to just go, you know, and get, we'll talk about his channel later, but there's probably more almost like stamina tips that you would have, but what would your, like how, because being prolific makes sense, but then there's the actual execution. You got to go actually right. do it. What are just a few tips of maybe mindset, health, I mean, two videos a day, making sure your content stays deep. 
Mm. How, how are you able to put out that much content? There's two strategies that I think people generally take. And one of them is that, in fact, there's a story in this. I can't remember the name of the book, but it's about it's about pottery. It's a, it's a pretty famous story, but it's really, really true. There's, you know, the basic idea of the story was that this professor had these college students, one group of them, he had them, they, the, the goal was to make the, the best pot possible, right? And so one of them, what their strategy was, was that they were just going to spend all their time building this one perfect pot. And the other other group what they did was they just made as many pots as they could mm. and then at the end what ended up happening was the the group that made as many pots whether they are crap or not they didn't care they just made as many as possible they were the ones that actually produced the best quality one right so so the idea is that you've got to put stuff out there before it's ready. Talking about those two strategies in life, right? A lot of people choose one where they try to make things perfect, right? And so in writing, a lot of people would, you know, they might have like five or six drafts, right? When I started blogging, I shipped the first draft pretty much every time. Now, I mean, I checked for grammatical errors and stuff, but I didn't rewrite anything. Sure. Okay. And I, a lot of my first writing, it was horrible. It was, it was really bad. Same with my videos. It was bad. Hey, John Sonman from simpleprogrammer.com. And today I want to talk to you about a problem that I've had a lot in life. Yeah, yeah I couldn't speak on camera. I was full of ums and ahs and all this. And, and my writing was just, just bad. But because I was shipping stuff at five times the rate as people that were proof, proofing things and, and doing multiple drafts, what ended up happening is over time, you, you diverge and you actually become better. Like your first draft becomes better than someone else's fifth draft. Yeah. And that's what happened with, with video. It happened with me for, for writing as well. And so I had great improvements. So the, the big thing is that you just got to keep on going and you got to put the stuff out there even if it's not polished. And what happens also, what's great about that, is that if you rely on five drafts, if you rely on 500 cuts when you're trying to do a video and you record the video over and over again, what ends up happening is you, that becomes a crutch for you. Like mm. you can't escape that and so you're going to be slow. But if you can muster the courage to put out stuff that maybe is not the best you could possibly do, but you're, you're shipping it out and you're shipping often, you're gonna become better at that. You're gonna to get to the point where, like I said, your your first draft will be better than someone's polished draft, right? And, and so that's a really valuable skill to have that's gonna make you prolific. Another thing I would say about it is that you wanna start slow, okay? So, uh, for example, with my YouTube videos, what I did was I didn't just start shipping two YouTube videos a day. That's crazy. You, sure. you can't just start doing that. What I did was I was doing one a week, but and I was editing and I was doing everything for the video myself, but I documented the process. And then I carefully constructed pieces of it out of it that I could hand off to someone else, right? Mm. In fact, before I even handed off to someone else, what I did was I had the process myself and I had templates for what I was gonna do, right? The, the videos follow this format. I do this sequence, you know, and it allowed me to go faster. And mm. once I could go faster, then I could do like three videos a week on my own, even editing it and everything. And then after that, I could take the, the pieces that I didn't need to be involved in and I could give them to someone else. And that really accelerated the cycle, right? So now yeah. when I do videos, I just record the video and I can one shot it. I don't do any cuts or anything. And then I drop it in Dropbox and mm -hmm. there you go. You gotta have a system. Yeah, you gotta process. have a system. So punch perfectionism in the face and build a system and publish more videos because mm -hmm. it's gonna level you up. Hey, that brings us to tip number four, be polarizing. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by that? So the best example I can give, and this is, even me just saying this is gonna polarize some of your audience. Right? Yeah. They're gonna be like, oh, I can't believe you're saying that. But, Here we go. <laughs> but Trump is, is the best example, I think, in the modern modern day. And and just be it by me saying that word, yeah. you already can tell that it's it's effective. Because Everyone's you, got an opinion. Right, you either love him or hate him, Mo most people. There's very few people I've met that are neutral, and the people that are neutral, they're lying. They're, they're usually like, they have an opinion, they just, they're afraid to say it. Sure. Right. So. So the the point is is that all the other politicians, right? When you look at his his campaign and, and running, they were trying to be liked by as many people as possible, right? Mm. And that's kind of the general strategy that most people use in life, and especially trying to build your brand. And it's a very bad strategy. Like Trump, kind of proved that. Again, you don't have to like him, you don't have to hate him, but but you can learn a lot. Yeah, from exactly. It. You can acknowledge yeah. that it worked, right? Yeah. That that polarizing technique because because if you're just nice to everyone and if you're just you just say the things and you're afraid to step on any toes and and you don't stand for anything you know what ends up happening is people are like eh 
they, they, that's how they feel about you. They're like, meh. Yeah. It's, it's like, you know, the, the biblical story of like, you know, of, uh, of Jesus saying like, lukewarm, right? It's like, you're lukewarm, right? Sure. Hot or cold, just not in the middle. Exactly. That's just like, it's like boring. It's just average. But when you polarize, when you say stuff that's going to offend some people, that some people are going to disagree with, they're not going to like it. Like in my videos, I use some pretty strong language. And, you know, some people are like, I'm never watching your videos because, because you, you said the F word. Yeah. I'm like, okay, good, good. You're not my audience, right? You're not the person that um, that I'm resonating with. But when you're polarizing like that, people are gonna hate you and other people are gonna love you. And the beautiful thing about it is that the people that hate you, what are they gonna do? They're gonna talk about you. Yeah. And again, if we went back to the Trump example, he was in the news every single, he's still in the news every single day. That's right. Why? It's not the people that love him that are putting him in the news. Yeah. It's the people that hate him. And so, again, I'm not saying that you should make everyone hate you, yeah. but if you want people to love you, you have to have people that hate you. There's, there's virtually no in-between, so you can't please everyone. And, so, and, and again, that, I think that's the thing that people are very afraid to do when they're building a brand, is they're afraid to polarize. They're afraid to offend people, and, and by doing that, they, they end up being lukewarm. Yes, you can grow, it'll take you a long time, but if you're polarizing, if you're out there standing for something, you know, you're gonna you're gonna see a lot more people sharing you. You're gonna see a lot more people getting in your camp. You know they're gonna know that you stand for something. So yeah. So pick a side. And how has this uh, been applied to bulldog mindset? I mean, initially, it, you're really just targeting men. So you've already kind of cut off mm -hmm. some of the population. But on top of but you've seen some things happen. So what kind of has been your polarizing distinctions with your current brand? Yeah. So you know with with bulldog mindset, there's there's probably a, you know, quite a few things that people could list that that they would say that they they know what I stand for, right? What what I'm about, right? I can still even be a reasonable human being. If people disagree with me. I'm okay with that, right? Yeah. But I express very strongly in my videos. I talk about things like my economic policy. I talk about why men should, you know, masculinity and femininity is a, is a big theme on my on my channel. And I talk about the idea that men should be masculine and men should be men, right? Not a lot of people don't like that message, yeah. right? But that's a it's a polarizing message. Uh, I talk about you know uh, things like uh, like fitness and and how important it is to not be lazy and and again some triggering topics. But I give my, my take on that. So there's a, a lot of things that kind of encompass that whole idea of, of things that uh, that I feel represent the brand and represent myself. That you know if I thought about it, right? In fact, there, there's times where. I'll record a video and, and one of my family members will say, oh, I can't believe you record that. <laughs> like people ask me about you and, the, and then yeah. they, they're watching, the neighbors are watching your video and it's like, uh, yeah, I, I did say that. So that's kind of the test, say stuff, you have to do stuff. And it doesn't have to be super extreme, but you have to have some some standpoint. Even, you know, I, I do a lot of coaching for software developers to build their brand and they're like, does that mean that I need to like have a political stance in my in my software development blog or my video? I'm like, mm. no, 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 just say JavaScript sucks. Are you you know what I mean? Like yeah. have some kind of thing. It can be technical. It doesn't have to be political. With Bulldog Mindset, because it's about masculinity and men, yeah. there's a lot of a political element to it. Hmm. But it could be anything. It could just be, I mean, you could be a chef and you could be like, oh, I seafood is the worst food ever. No one should yeah. ever cook seafood. It's just horrible, right? Or you could, you know, whatever it is, have some kind of a stance that you're going to stand for and say why this is the best and, and you, know, you have to have your enemy, who's your enemy over here and, and, and stand for something. Super powerful. And you saw that while you only focus on men though, mm -hmm. do women watch your content? Well, so what's what's kind of funny, what's interesting is, you know, I kind of doubled down recently in the last probably month on actually calling it out in the videos. Because before it was kind of like you'd watch videos, you'd be like, okay, there's a lot of content for men and, and how to how for men to uh, get relationships and, and dealing with men's issues. But I started calling out at the beginning of the video, you know, this channel will teach you how to be a man, you know, in a society that, that doesn't like masculinity. It'll teach you how to be a masculine man. And, and I basically called out to say that it is for men. And then amazingly, I started seeing all these comments from women showing up in the channel and not bad comments, like yeah. good comments. They want to be part of the brand. So it's kind of funny. Sometimes when you do that, you actually end up attracting an audience that you didn't think you had. So powerful. Just because you narrow down, you might think you're excluding people, but the mm -hmm. power is getting narrow for you're focusing on men. You might be focusing on a certain age, demographic, whatever. But nevertheless, that doesn't mean that that'll be the only people attracted to you. But if exactly. you are near, if you're just generic and no one's following you, maybe then no one follows you. That's what's crazy. You're not right. targeting women, 
but you built a clear brand, a strong message, and yet they still, some are watching, super, super powerful. All right, so we're gonna get to tip number five in just a second, but mm. actually, right now, it's time for the lightning round. What do you feel about that? All right, let's do it. <laughs> lightning round, lightning round, three, two, one. Uh, favorite city, not where you live? Berlin. Scale from one to 10, how good of a driver are you? Oh, at least a 9.5. Nice. That's what everybody thinks about their own <laughs> driving. Um, but but I haven't had a ticket in, in like 20 years, so. Ooh, strong. Fill in the blank. Kanye West is? A brand, powerful brand. One habit that helps you make more money as an entrepreneur? I have to say discipline. If you could, you have two options. You can either speak every language on planet Earth mm -hmm. or you can legitimately talk to animals. What do you choose? I'm gonna go with talk to animals. I feel like that'd be more fun. Now to John, the marathon runner, intermittent fasting, always in the gym, what's your favorite junk food? I can't even I can't even really think of one. Like when was the last time you ate something that wasn't good for you? Probably a week ago. What yeah. was it? What was it? I, oh, bread pudding. I had bread pudding. That was good. I like bread Some pudding. good bread pudding? So if it's good bread pudding. Okay. Yeah. With caramel sauce, hot caramel sauce. What's your favorite junk food? Tell us in the comments. Yeah. What's one piece of advice you would give to your younger self, say 20 years old? You know, actually what I would say is don't ever work for someone else. Just, you know, get by being poor for Commit to five years, right? If I'm 20, just say five years, just work on building your business. Don't worry about anything else. Don't worry about a career. Don't waste your time punching the clock for, for anyone else. Just focus on building a business. That would be it. Boom. One book every influencer watching should read. As a Man Thinketh. Classic. We'll link that up in the description if you want to check it out. How many cups of coffee do you drink a day? Zero. I, just, I, st I cut out coffee about a month ago, so. Sure you did, I'm sure you did. All you drink is water, all you eat is kale. No, I'm just kidding. But what's what's your beverage go-to then, mostly? Well, it's been water, actually, <laughs> like for for the last couple of weeks. Otherwise, I I do like to drink diet soda, so I had to cut myself off from that. For those as well. And a favorite verse, or maybe like a quote you kind of like to live your life by or you think about often? Wow, there's so many of them. I'll just give one that comes to mind, is how you do anything is how you do everything. But I have a twist on it. As I, I say, how you live one day is how you live every day. Lightning round. Choo choo. <laughs> all right, we're gonna share tip number five in just a second, but John, if people wanna check you out, thank you so much for all the value you've been adding to our community. What's your YouTube channel and any resource you wanna share with our community? Oh, sure, yeah. So, Bulldog Mindset, you can you can just find it on, on YouTube. And then, if you want to see what your Bulldog score is, like how much, how mentally tough you are, what is your mindset, you know, how David Goggins are you, yeah. go to, uh, to bulldogmindset.com and then right there, there'll just be a button to click to take the Bulldog Mindset quiz and it'll give you a, a score, tell you you know if you're a Chihuahua or if you're a Super Bulldog, and then some tips to improve your Bulldog Mindset score. Dude, I love it, it's a fun quiz. We'll link to that in the description if you wanna check it out. And uh, I'm not gonna tell you my score because I gotta level it up, <laughs> but, uh, but check it out. And uh, tip number five though, on how to build your personal brand from scratch is focus on a specific group of people. What do you mean by that? So, you know, again, it's very similar to polarizing, but, but I think it's, it's a little bit different is you need to know who the audience is that you're appealing to, right? Who do you resonate with? Who's going to resonate with you? And, and, and try, to, try to figure out how you can craft your entire brand and all of your message to that, that group of people. Got it. Yeah, because when it comes, like if you try and reach everybody, mm -hmm. you end up reaching nobody. Right. And so it, I heard, I think maybe Zig Ziglar say, it's better to be a meaningful specific than mm -hmm. a wandering generality. Exactly. Yeah. What is your advice for people who are struggling with figuring out their niche or figuring out how to narrow down and figure out their target audience? Okay, yeah. So the, the what I used to say is, you know, to, to pick something really, really small. So my example of, of niching down is, let's say that your garbage disposal is broken, right? And you know, you, you're gonna go through the, I guess it's not yellow pages anymore, but you're looking for a, you know, a, a plumber and you see ABC Plumbing Services and then you see Mr. Garbage Disposal Fix-It Man, mm -hmm. right? Who are you gonna call? A guy with a specific that right. can really solve your exact problem. And who's gonna charge you more? <laughs> he's gonna charge you more, right? Cause yeah. he's gonna have a higher bill rate because more people are calling him. And so, 
think about that. Think about how you can be, again, again another great example would be, let's, let's suppose that you were convicted of, or not convicted, but you're accused of murder. Would you just call a generic lawyer or would you call a criminal defense lawyer who specializes in getting people off of murder charges, mm. right? It's going to be very important in that case. And so that's the key thing is like, don't worry about alienating other people. I, I deal with this a lot of times with software developers because they're like, well, I know C++ and Java and JavaScript and all this, and I need to put all that on my resume or on my brand so people know that I'm the MacGyver of, mm. you're not the, no one wants to hire a MacGyver. Everyone wants you to be a MacGyver, but they don't want to hire the MacGyver. They mm. want to hire the specialist. They want to hire the guy that that has a very specific skill set so just pick one thing it doesn't mean that's the only thing you can do but you need to have one thing that you market yourself by yeah. that's the thing right because if you again if you took the garbage disposal fix it man guy right he's probably just a, a good plumber he could probably fix your 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 toilet and all kinds of things right he could probably run pipe and, and all these things but he's targeting himself with that marketing message so Pick one thing. Don't worry about if it's leaving these other things. Don't worry about pigeonholing yourself. And and I used to tell people to you know just to, to niche down and, and and try to get down to that lower level. But now what I'm saying is, pick the one thing that you can be the number one best in the world at. And that that might seem like a very overwhelming thing, but if you need, that's how you know you niche down small enough, mm. right? So for example, with with Simple Programmer with my other brand, it's very clear that 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 brand and, and my myself and that brand that I'm the number one best in the world at teaching soft skills to software developers. There's no one that's even close to that, right? We're number one best in the world. And because of that, we're able to build a reputation around that. So pick something that you're gonna niche down small enough that you can be number one best in the world. And there's always a way to slice it so that you can be that. Yeah, I love it. Keep working on it. Even if it is not clear at first, like you said, you could slice it, work on your messaging. And when you find that, mm -hmm. boom, you can get clarity in the marketplace and grow your brand, your YouTube channel, and whatever projects you're working on faster. John, you shared some major value. Smash like if you got value out of this video. And like we like to do as we close is also, you, you've been an entrepreneur now for years. You've mm -hmm. built you know multiple successful businesses and all these different things. You know, people in our community are building all kinds of different projects, but you know that it is a grind. There's mm -hmm. ups, there's downs, it's an emotional roller coaster. Can you just give some final parting words to our community when it comes to just sticking, you know, I don't know, sticking to it? Just just some advice for the good seasons and the bad seasons and lasting over the long haul as we're all building our businesses and our brands and our YouTube channels. Sure, yeah. So I would say, you know, the big thing is is like you said, the, the grind. And, and really, the biggest skill I think that you can really have as an entrepreneur, or even just to be successful in life, is to be able to work without motivation. Mm. Is because what's gonna happen is, no matter what, what it is, I mean, I'm doing the most fun thing I could possibly, I could, the, the life I'm living now, the dream of waking up and being able to record videos and like talk to people and get paid a huge amount of money to do that, I still wake up days and I'm like, oh, I, don't, I don't wanna record videos today. And I, and, I, and I have to like smack myself because I'm like, remember when you're in a cubicle, mm -hmm. like writing code and writing documentation and, it, and like doing all kinds of boring stuff and, and someone else was telling you what to do? I lose motivation. But what, what I learned, the skill that I mastered and the, and the skill that you have to have is, is to realize that you don't need motivation. You can still get up and you can still do it because the reason why I think a lot of people are not successful as entrepreneurs is they don't give it enough time. What they do is they, they embark upon something they're really excited about, they're really excited about their idea, their new brand, the new business they're gonna build, and then they lose that excitement and they lose the motivation. And so they say, this must not be the right, the right. Uh, let me dig a hole over here. Let me, let me see if there's some gold over here. And they keep digging all these holes, trying all these new business ideas, and all they had to do was stick with the same thing and my golden rule is for five years. Mm -hmm. Everything substantial that you're ever gonna accomplish in life, any kind of great achievement, five years. That's how long it takes. Influencers, man, that was amazing. John, really appreciate you. Yeah. Thanks for coming on. We'll of course link to his channel and all those resources in the description below. So much value and so appreciate it. Subscribe if you're not subscribed and we will see you in the next video. Peace. Yeah.